Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dimples On Demand. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the apps that I am currently doing and what are the pros and the cons of those apps. Now, this video was requested by, as told by Kiva, and she asked this question on an episode of Gig Talk. This is a show that T and I host, A Journey with T and I, host every Sunday. So if you guys are not watching, make sure that you are. And keep asking this question during one of the shows and I am here to answer these questions. Um, T has already done her video. So if you have not checked that out, please go to her channel. Uh, yeah, so as you guys know, I do many, 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 many apps. Uh, I think to talk about all the apps that I have done would it would just be too long of a video and I know you guys wouldn't watch the whole thing. So I'm gonna focus on, uh, I think I have five here that I am gonna talk about today. Um, I'm just gonna focus on the ones that I have done within the last six months. So we're gonna talk about Instacart first. Um, the pros of the app, I'm gonna start with the pros. <laughs> So the pros of the app is that it is on demand. Now, when I first started, this was not a feature that Instacart had. You had to place yourself on a schedule and they would send you orders according to your location and the hours that you signed up for. Um, but it is now on demand, so that's a pro for me. I'm dimples on demand. <laughs> um, I like the fact that you can see your tips up front because that to me is a defining factor in me taking a batch. I like that they do have promos every now and again. It depends on your area. I've seen many different promos that people have been offered, but they're not all grand, but at least they're offering something. And it's a way to kind of like get people out there, but it can be a little tricky. So you just have to view it and make sure that the promo is right for you. I like the fact that they do uh, give you a visual of where your pickup and drop off is going to be. And if you zoom in on the map, you can kind of tell if it's a residential home or an apartment building. And that just gets better with time because not every time that I can tell, oh yes, that's definitely an apartment building. Um, but once you learn your area, you you just know that in this specific area, it's mostly densely populated with apartment buildings versus residential homes. I like that the app is pretty much, in my opinion, user friendly. Um, it, it almost will not allow you to make a mistake if you pick up the wrong item or if you scan the wrong item, it's going to like prompt you several times to say, are you sure this is the item? This doesn't seem like it's the item, blah, blah, blah. So in my opinion, the app is user-friendly. Um, there are some things that you just learn as you go or you learn from watching others. Uh, I cannot say that I knew everything when I first started doing Instacart, but I can also say I didn't really struggle with learning the app. So for me, it was uh, user-friendly. Um, a pro is that Instacart has a cash out feature. Now I have never used the cash out feature, but I know for many people it is important to have that cash out feature. And I just think it's a good thing if you need it. Uh, also a pro is that signing up for the app was fairly easy. Um, it was so long ago, but as far as I can remember, you fill out, <laughs> you know, your general information, your city, your location, your name, blah, blah, blah. And I think you get hired right away. Tell me if I'm wrong, but it is a easy process. Now let's get into the cons. Um, I don't like that Instacart where they believe the customer is always right. And at the height of the pandemic, a lot of customers were getting away with whatever they, say, they said went. And I didn't like that Instacart always took the customer's side. Like for example, I delivered an order, I 
took pictures of the order once I delivered it and the customer reported that all of her high priced items were damaged even though clearly they were not damaged in the photo she was able to leave you know a derogatory mark on my account and I didn't like that and Instacart has um, a way for you to report this accusation as fraud but as far as I have seen nothing has ever come out of it um, I don't know if after a while a customer reporting you know that something is damaged or missing several times and the shopper has proof I don't know what happens to the customer to be very honest with you I have no clue but I've had customers try to report something missing or damaged when it wasn't like it just wasn't and to this day those marks are still on my account even though none of them were true so i don't like that instacart really leans on the side of the customer which i know it's a business and i know the customers you know are the backbone of the business because if they didn't place any orders then the company would not be up and running so i get it but it's like come on especially when the shoppers are out here technically risking our lives to provide them with you know great service and make sure that they get the food and the items that they need for their family so that's a, a con in my opinion um, another con is that customer service with Instacart once upon a time you used to be able to speak to someone on the phone and since the pandemic I just think they they have done away with that feature so I have not spoken to an Instacart customer service rep in months um, during the pandemic it was very very difficult to get in contact with any any customer service person since then i have definitely seen an improvement um there is no wait to speak to anyone when i need to reach out to them so um customer service can be a hit or a miss um a con is that the good orders go quickly um i know that they state that if you are rated higher, you get to see some of the higher paying batches. I do believe that. And then sometimes I just don't believe it. But for the most part, I think it's accurate, but they go very quickly. As we know, Instacart has had some issues with um, people using bots to obtain the higher paying batches. And I just felt like, you know, as a tech company, how could you let something like this happen um there was a period where it was just it didn't even make sense to sign on to instacart because you weren't getting any batches if you didn't pay for that bot service and i know ah, i was not paying for that service so i just shifted to something else i did another app because if i can't get any batches then what's the point a con is that your pay is weighed heavily on the customer's tip um before Instacart used to, the base pay used to be more. And suddenly, like you used to get paid per item that you picked up and it's not like that anymore. Um, you get paid to deliver basically. So you can pick up an order that has a hundred items, 200 items and the base pay is so the base pay is so insignificant compared to what the customer's tip is and it's it's not right like instacart should be paying us more because we are the face of the company <laughs> we're the ones that's out there driving the dis the long distances we are loading up our vehicles with cumbersome items heavy items um we're interacting heavily with the customer you know the pay that instacart is is paying it doesn't match what you put into it and i don't i don't like that um now with that because the pay is really on the shoulders of the customer that's a con because as we all know with instacart you can change your tip I think you have mm, I think you have three days to change a tip and you know people were tip baiting and I think some people still are where they would 
give you a high tip and then just because they wanted their order fulfilled and then they would um, reduce the tip. Of course, that's a con. Who wants a tip reduced after working so hard? Um, especially when it's a high paying tip. I think no matter what, regardless of how high or low the tip is, you should still put in the work. You still should work hard. You still should take pride in uh, the batch that you're fulfilling for the customer. Um, and even though it is a con that the tip weighs heavily on the customer, the fact that we can see the tip up front, <laughs> I guess could be a con too, because those orders are not getting, well, they're not getting done by me. I can tell you that much. Um, I guess that's a con for the customer, not really a con for me. So, uh, yes, I don't like that the tip can be reduced. A pro is I do like that the tip can be increased. I mean, who wouldn't like that? Um, ooh, another pro. A pro and a con within itself is that if the customer gives a percentage-based tip, that can increase or decrease how much you're actually paid. And it's not our fault that things are out of stock um you still spend the time looking for specific items and to me time is a form of currency so if i put in time to look for something just to verify and confirm that it's not there i still should be compensated so the fact that the customer's tip um if it's a percentage-based tip it can be affected by in stock or out of stock items. Now, yes, that's a con, but it can also be a pro when you add items to the order and that overall brings the total up, of course your tip is gonna be higher. Um, so yeah, pro and a con within itself. Now let's move on to ship. Let's talk about the pros and the cons. So the pro to me for ship is that it's also on demand. They do have a scheduling feature where you put yourself on the schedule and based on different ratings and blah, 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 they will send you offers. I believe you have like 90 seconds or so to look through that offer and decide whether or not you want to take it. Then that offer, if no one claims it, goes to an open metro and that metro is like a free for all. Anybody can see it and anyone can take it. So I like the fact that it's on demand. I don't care that it's a scheduled um, option because I don't care for the scheduling. Uh, another pro is that the base pay is higher depending on the city that you're in. So I used to live in Brooklyn, New York, and the pay for those orders, the base pay, it was worth it to me. Like you'll see base pay orders for $25, $30. This is without tip. Now, granted, living in New York is harder than living in New Jersey, depending on the area in Jersey. But where I live, it's it's not city-like. Um, so in New York, I had to worry about parking, apartment buildings, a whole slew of things. So honestly, I think what people make in New York, they deserve to get paid higher because you do kind of have to work a little harder. Uh, so you can have a high base base pay or a lower base pay just depending on your city. Um, I like that you can see the address up front. So with Instacart, you can't see the numerical address until you actually accept a batch. With Shipped, you can look through it without accepting. You can see whether it's an apartment building, whether it's a business, the floor, the apartment unit, all of that. So I like that you can see the apartment or the address up front. Um, another pro for me is most orders are from Target because as we know, Shipped is a Target company. So 90% of the orders that I see are from Target. And Target to me is an easy store. Um, I don't think that they have many options. You know, Shipped tells you that this is an aisle, whatever, F23. So that's pretty easy, especially if you live near a Target Express. Oh, then it gets even easier because Target Express, you can walk in, do a spin, and you'll be done with the whole store. So, but <laughs> I like that Target itself is a pretty easy store. Um, a pro for me, another pro for me is that the customer service, in my opinion, is excellent. I have never experienced 
or I've never had a bad experience with any customer service rep that I have interacted with. Um, I think they do a good job with vetting their customer service reps or employees, and I've never had an issue. Uh, you can contact customer service by calling or by uh, the chat feature, which is great. Um, another pro for me is that Shipt has they send out an email that allows you to claim monthly PPE, which from the very beginning, I think, well, from when I started, I think that that's amazing that you have the option to claim hand sanitizer and sanitizing wipes, gloves, whatever you need, you can claim it. Um, another pro for me is that you can drop an order. Say your order is between three and four. You have until 159 to drop that order without being penalized. Um, I'm not sure what the consequences are for dropping too many orders because I've never, I've not had to drop many orders past the time. Now let's get into the cons. So some cons for me are the tips can be a hit or miss. So when I look at Shipt and I take an order, in the back of my mind, I just think that I'm not getting tipped. That's how I have to approach the order. Because the customers, some tip and some don't. It's not like Instacart where you can see the tip up front. Um, I've had many orders where I have not gotten tipped. And that's not good. <laughs> that's not good because I feel that if you're gonna engage in this kind of service, people should tip. Now we all know tipping is a big, huge issue. This is not the video for that, but people should tip. And the fact that some customers don't is bothersome because on Instacart, I don't take orders that don't have tips, period. But with shipped, you kind of have to like, you know, you kind of have to decipher whether or not you're gonna take this order because the payout is so good <laughs> that the tip doesn't really matter. So the tips are hit and miss. I have been tipped really well with shipped and I have gotten zero dollars. Um, so it, it, it just varies. But my advice is to make sure that the order is worth it prior to tipping because if you're waiting for a tip, you know, don't hold your breath. Um, another con, base pay is low depending on the city that you're in. So like I said, when I was in Brooklyn, the base pay was much higher than where I am now, where I'm seeing the base pay for like $5 to go a good amount or a good distance. So I don't like that the base pay is lower. Of course, I want to make more money. Um, a con is the rating system ship has a rating system and to me it's like all psychological like they really play with your emotions and the ratings can drive you crazy if you allow it to stress you out um they rate you based on every 14 days every 50 50 days and then i guess your lifetime orders and once you fall below a certain threshold then you're gonna get what is known as a refresher. If you don't take the refresher in the allotted amount of time, then you are deactivated. Um, I don't think most shoppers know that, and these refresher courses end up in your junk mail, and before you know it, you could be deactivated for no reason, which is not fair. Um, but I, I guess I do like that they do offer you a refresher so you can at least know or improve what you might be doing wrong. But the rating system as a whole, I think is very, very stressful. Um, and it's, it's just, I don't know, this is just how I feel. <laughs> like it can, it could put you in a bad headspace if you let it get to you. Um, a con and a pro, I guess, is that signing up is a bit more difficult. So when I signed up, I don't know what it's like now, but when I signed up, you know, there were a series of questions you had to answer. There were video questions. It was like a full-on job interview. Yes, this is a job, but it was really involving. And I know a lot of people were not um, getting hired with the platform. I myself, the first time that I applied, did not 
they never call me back but then i give it another shot and of course i'm on the platform now so the sign up is a bit harder for individuals um another con is that there is no cash out feature although they did announce that it was coming soon currently it is not available yet so for those who are looking out who are looking for a cash out or instant cash out feature it's not here yet but it's coming a con is they have began to bundle orders um which why <laughs> like the best thing about ship to me is the fact that you can bundle your own orders which that that to me was like so grand that you controlled what orders you wanted to pick up you can control the schedule you can control what store you're picking up from like that was awesome and then now suddenly they have began to bundle orders um and what sucks is let's say something goes wrong in one of the bundles then they drop the whole order why <laughs> like it's not your fault that something went wrong in the order or if a customer cancels <clears throat> then you lose the batch like that the 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 bundle it's just strange so i don't like that they started to bundle the order and hopefully it will disappear but for now that's just what they're doing um a con is that the delivery only orders are a mystery you have absolutely no idea what you're picking up for example the party city orders um the best buy orders the bye bye baby orders they have started doing delivery only from Shoprite. you don't know what you're picking up it doesn't give you a description of what's in the order they don't give you any pictures, nothing. So you're literally going in there blind and I don't think that that's right. <laughs> I think that we all drive different vehicles and we should know what we're picking up because it's a waste of your time, your gas, your energy to drive to a location and then you actually see what you have to pick up and then it can't fit in your car. That's not fair. So that is most definitely a con. So those are my pros and cons for the company. My next up on the list is Grubhub. So um, Grubhub was actually the very first gig app that I signed up for way back in 2015. So trust me, <laughs> they have had their ups and their downs, but honestly, I enjoy the, I enjoy the app to be honest. So let's get into the pros and the cons. Um, Grubhub, the overall pay, the payouts for the orders are higher compared to almost every single food delivery app that I have done except for one. Grubhub pays more, period. There was a time when I was picking up McDonald's orders for like $18, $20, like crazy. Uh, so overall, their pay is higher. Another pro for me is that you can visual, visually see the um, pickup location and the drop-off location. So, you know, you can see the neighborhood that you're dropping off. You can see where you're picking up, and I like that. Um, another pro is that they have a cash-out feature. For those of you that are interested in that, it's a wonderful feature. I've never used it, but I like that it's an option. Um, I like that you can see the pay up front. You can see what you're getting paid. You can see what the customer's tipping. I like that. I like that you can decline orders. And now I'm sure that there is some penalty for continuously declining. Um, I have not ran into that issue. Um, but I, I like that you can decline and move on. Because I think as independent contractors, we should have the right to <laughs> not do the orders that we don't want to do. So Grubhub definitely has that feature. Um, I like that when they have promos, they have good promos. Um, there was one weekend when I made, I'm saying a weekend, listen to me. <laughs> there was one weekend when Grubhub was running such a good promotion. I made $900 in a weekend. Like, when they have their promos, they are good promos. I have not 
had any promo since moving to New Jersey, but when I was in Brooklyn, they were good. Pro is that they send you delivery bags, nice delivery bags. Um, so starting off, you know, you, you're equipped with the things that you need to get your job done. Um, let's get into the cons. This list is actually short. So the cons that I have for Grubhub are the customer service can be pretty poor at times. Um, a lot of the customer service seems to be outsourced and I don't like, I don't like when you call customer service and you're explaining, sometimes it could be a really common issue and the rep has no clue what you're talking about. So I've found that I've run into, you know, situations where, or instances where it was just a waste of my time to even contact customer service. So it can be poor. I'm not saying that it's like that all the time, but I have had, I've had experiences where it was just not worth it. Um, canceling an order can be difficult to cancel because they, you know, that when you cancel an order, because you're waiting, there's no wait time, right? Which I don't like. So to me, I should have the right to decipher whether or not I'm going to wait because you guys are not paying me to wait. So I should say, okay, then I need to move on. Um, I, oh, let me put this on the pro. This is a pro that I forgot to add on. I do like that you are alerted within the app when the order is actually ready for pickup. Now, of course, that's a pro, but not all merchants utilize that feature. So it's nice when they use it. So you're not like lingering in the restaurant or walking back and forth. Like, you know, you could, you get the alert. Okay, now it's time for me to actually go into the restaurant. Um, a con, which is actually new for me since moving here is Grubhub is like, they're cracking the whip, right? which I get it. I know that they want their I want they want their business to run smoothly. They want the food to get there hot. But if I get an order and like I'm putting on my shoes to head out the door, I will get a message saying that you've accepted this order and it doesn't look like you've made any attempt to go get the order. And I'm just like, can I put on my coat? Can I get to the car? Like, <laughs> you know, they they're actually cracking the whip, which Yes, I understand, but at the same time, goodness, give us, can we get five minutes before you're going crazy on us? Pay card is a bit annoying sometimes. Now, the pay card is new to me since moving here because before I didn't have a pay card. Um, okay, so here's where that, here's where that, that um, notification feature that you haven't left the house yet. All right, for example, you have a pay card order. You can call the restaurant because those are the options within the app. You can call and order the food ahead of time or you can order the food when you get there. Now, Subways and these kind of places, yes, that's quick food. But if we're talking about a specialty restaurant, dine in where everything is cooked to order, of course I'm gonna call ahead of time because they're giving me a wait time of 35 to 40 minutes, right? To me, if I have a pay card order and I call ahead of time, why do I need to head to the store that's five minutes away to sit in my car and wait for another 40 minutes? Doesn't make sense. So I'm being prompted that I have not taken the necessary steps to head to the restaurant, but there's no need for me to head to the restaurant if the wait is 40, 45 minutes. So it's kind of like a catch 22 because you're ordering ahead of time because you know that it's gonna take a while, but then you're penalized if you don't move towards the store fast enough. Like, I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I would think it would make sense that I can order the food when I'm in my house or on my way. You know, I, I don't know. It's like, you're gonna get dinged no matter what. So it's kind of annoying because they're pushing you to go to the store or the restaurant right then and there, but then you still got to wait for like 40 minutes. So definitely a con. I do not like that. Um, but I don't take that many pay card orders anyway, but the ones that I have taken, I realize that you actually do get paid more. Like you're getting paid 
$40 to do a pay card order. So we're going to talk about Uber Eats next. Now, you guys know that I refer to Uber Eats as old faithful. Let me tell you, Uber Eats is, as long as you treat it right, it's going to always be there for you. Um, let's start with the pros. Uber Eats, a pro is that you can now see the pay up front or an estimate of what the pay might be, which is fairly new because you because you were not able to see what the customer was tipping, but now they have implemented a new feature where you are able to see that. I like that you can decline orders. Um, I think after declining three orders, you get a message like, are you still available? Like they'll sign you right off, you know? But I like that you can decline orders. Um, I'm gonna name the two biggest pros for me is that Uber Eats is 24 seven. You can sign on at any time. As long as there is a restaurant open that is on the platform, you will be able to work, which is gold. <laughs> McDonald's 24 hours. Um, what's another late one? Wendy's. Wendy's is Wendy's on um, Uber Eats? No, but like those late night restaurants, or if you depend on where you live, a nice Jamaican restaurant that's 24 hours, you can work 24 hours. So I think that's a plus. I love that there is no scheduling feature. You sign on and off when you want to. It's perfect. Um, I also like that they are everywhere. I have Ubered in only two states, um, but you sign on and they're available. A con is that over the years, the pay has been low on Uber. Um, I've also noticed that the distances have expanded and almost become so unrealistic that I'm like, why would you even allow someone to order food that is 40, a 40 minute drive? You know what I mean? So I think it's ridiculous. Um, the customer service, if you need help, I find that it's hard to reach someone. If you have an active order, it's different, but if you close out an order and that order had an issue, you cannot speak to anyone live. You have to email, then they email you back. Like it's a bit difficult to deal with a customer service rep. I like that Uber has a cash out or instant cash out feature. I don't utilize it anymore, but when I was getting out of debt, I was cashing out every night to send money to my student loan payment. So it's definitely a great feature. The last one, or I guess second to last is DoorDash. I'm not really a fan of them anymore. I don't completely hate them, but you guys see I don't really talk about them like that. Um, customers, let's, I don't even have a pro. Do I have a pro? I don't have a pro. Okay, let me give a pro. They now have a Dash Now feature, which they didn't have before. So I guess now that they have it, that's their version of On Demand and it's available. Um, you can't dash now unless the map is red and that map changes from red to gray quickly. Um, it's like I'm grasping at straws here. I think that's it for the pros. There's a cash out feature, I think. I believe there is, but I believe the threshold or the, they charge you to cash out. I think it's $5. I don't even know. Yo, I don't even know about the... I don't know about the cash out feature. I think at one time or at one point, they were charging people $5 to cash out. What it is now, I don't I don't know because I don't cash out and I really don't do the app like that. Um, I think that's it for the, for the pros. For the cons, um, customer service is horrible. Uh, some of the wait times to even speak with someone is ridiculous, ridiculous. Uh, you don't get paid for waiting. Um, I don't like that you can repeatedly decline. I do not want to pick up from this restaurant over and over and over again. And they will send you orders from that exact same restaurant that you have declined over and over again. So 
what's the point of me indicating I don't want to pick up from this restaurant for you guys to only send me that restaurant again? I think that's very strange. Um, I don't like some of the partnerships that they have, but it's not my company, so who am I to even complain about that? Um, yeah, I don't hate DoorDash, but I really don't like them <laughs> that much. I will never discourage anyone from doing it. Do it. See if you like it. DoorDash is quite lucrative for many, many people, but I want you guys to try it. I want you guys to try DoorDash just to see if you like it. But yeah, very short list of pros and cons. It's just not an app that I care for. Um, the last app that I'm going to talk about is Postmates. I have nothing to say. <laughs> that is a pro at all for Postmates. I do not like Postmates. I don't even think that I encourage people to do Postmates. Maybe download the app, give it a shot. Um, but I don't think it's worth it at all, at all. Some people do it, some people make money. They are unicorns, they are few and far between. Postmates, I don't know. I've never even utilized them as a an app. Like I just, no, uh, no pros at all. So that is the end of this video. I think that I have pretty much named the apps that I am currently working on, the pros and the cons. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna name every gig that I've ever done because it's gonna be way too long, but that is it. I hope you guys can um, pull from this what you may, some useful information. Ultimately, what I say is not gold and you should go out and try them for yourselves. But this is what's working for me right now. And that is it for this video. So I wanna thank you guys for coming back. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And you know I will catch you on the next one. Bye.